Welcome to this new year. I want to kick this year off with a message of encouragement, hope and guidance for the new season ahead in the year 2021. I've entitled this God, the Radical Turnaround Specialist. I want to repeat that. God, the Radical Turnaround Specialist. And man, do we need some turnarounds in our lives and in the world at this stage. You see, through the ages, God has shown Himself to turn the wilderness into a fruitful land, to bring beauty from ashes, joy from sorrow, life from death, and to take us from negative to positive, from minus to plus. He makes a door of hope, the Bible says, to appear in the valley of despair. And it's called the valley of Achor in Hosea 2 verse 15. A source of calamity becoming a place of blessing. And I imagine that that is what God wants to do for you and me as His children in this time, irrespective of what we have experienced in this recent season. So how does He do it? Well, fundamentally, by the cross of Christ. Christ giving His life on the cross for you and me was a seismic happening which still reverberates through the ages to bring hope that God can and will radically turn around things in our lives for the better and humanity as a whole. We have to have to believe that God has got a grand plan for the end to turn out to be a victory for Him and His people. I must add this, God's turnaround plans are not always instant solutions, but it is sure to happen. You can bank on that. And through the cross, He still turns minuses into pluses for the whole human race, including you and me. So to affect this turnaround in your life and mine, I strongly encourage you to look at the following four things I want to leave with you. Firstly, look at what you've got and be thankful for that. Not at what you've lost or don't have. And all of us have lost something in this past year and past season. Whether it's a loved one or a job or whatever. But I, I think there's very few people who've not lost something. But we cannot get stuck in our loss. And I believe with that one of the ways that we can affect God's turnaround strategy is to start to give. Firstly, our thankfulness to Him for His, His faithfulness, but also then give from what you've got to bring hope for those who lack of what you have. Secondly, unburden. Take off the yoke of worry and redirect that energy into faith in God. Simple. Be assured that God cares for you. Unburden yourself of the cares and the worry. We can't change anything, the Bible tells us, by worrying. You see, when your mind is captured by worry and cares of this world, the, the sorrow of it is actually, you can miss the golden moment when God steps into your situation to bring radical turnaround because you're preoccupied with your worries. So free your mind and your speech to make room for the thoughts of God to take hold. Take the occupied sign off the door of your mind and your heart and replace it maybe with a prayer like this. Father, I'm open and available for what you can do and want to do in and through my life. Lord, I dedicate myself to be a servant of your will and your purpose to bring hope in this world. Amen. There is a good prayer for this year. So let me leave you with two more things I believe are triggers for radical turnaround. Next one. Restore your first love for Jesus. When you do that, it brings what I like to call a sunergeo moment. It's the Greek word used in Romans 8 verse 29 where Paul writes and says to us, For those who love God, all things work together. Sunergeo. And for those who are the called according to His purpose. You see, when you and I restore our first love for Jesus, make that our number one priority, 
I believe that it, it summons and unleashes God's unlimited power to make all things, even the bad things, work together for your good. And as you give yourself for God's purpose. Lastly, reset your focus to be on living, not on dying. Reset your focus to be on living a life of complete and simple faith in God and His unlimited ability and doing whatever He says to you. So in short, love God and trust and obey Him completely. I believe that translates into the promise we read of in Malachi 4 verse 2 and 3. I believe those are the people who fear the Lord. It's not a fear of being afraid. Uh, it, it, it's not like that. It, it's a fear that says, I love and respect God enough to obey Him. And this is what Malachi 4 verse 2 and 3 says. But to you who fear my name, the Lord says, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in His wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. Now I know some, some people say, I don't want to grow fat, but it means a picture of health and energy. And then it says this, you shall trample, verse 3, the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. I trust that you will find Malachi 4, verse 2 and 3, scriptures that you can take with you on your road ahead, that it will guide you and encourage you. And I pray, Father, at the beginning of this year, hear the prayer that we've prayed in this short message already, surrendering ourselves to you, but also from our hearts, Lord. We say, Lord, we love you, and we will trust in you and obey you and keep our lives simple in that respect so that you can show again that you are the specialist of radical turnaround in our lives. And let all the glory be yours. Amen.